Welcome back to Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie, and this just doesn't look right. This empty spot in the lineup. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Teddy the Arcade Dog seems to be confused, too. Doesn't know what's going on. Uh, if you watched our last episode, you know that I'm trying to make some room out in the garage by bringing working games down here into the basement. And the first one that we brought down was NBA Jam. I put it into the kids' playroom as part of my long-term plan to take over and make that room the arcade room in the house. Um, and the next game I want to bring down is Armor Attack, because that's pretty much ready to, to come down here. But in order to do that, I needed to make some room down here in my office, my basement office, where I've got sort of my, think of it as my primary arcade room right now. And we needed to make some room, so that meant that uh, Centipede had to go. Um, but before you get upset and start asking, well, where did Centipede go? Let me show you. So no need to worry, Centipede is here safe and sound next to NBA Jam in the kids' playroom. Uh, Centipede is one that the kids like playing uh, quite a lot. Uh, and I did set it on free play using some of the, uh, uh, the dip switch settings on the PCB just because I don't want to have another bucket of quarters over here. So these games uh, in this room are going to be on free play for, uh, for now. So um, yeah, so for more stuff for the kids to enjoy and more working arcade games to bring into the house. So back over here, there's a couple things we're going to need to do to that armor attack out in the garage before we can bring it down here into the basement. Uh, there's a little bit of cosmetic work we need to do, uh, clean it up. Uh, I want to replace the buttons. But uh, the one big thing we're going to do, which is a huge no-no and a cardinal sin of arcade game collecting, is don't move a working vector game. They're too fragile. They break too easily. And moving these games around, jostling them around like that is a great way to turn a working game into a non-working game. So yeah, in this episode, I'm going to violate that cardinal rule. I'm going to commit a, a cardinal sin, and hopefully I don't pay the ultimate price for it. So why don't we head out to the garage, do some work on that armor attack, cross our fingers, and see how it goes. Let's go! Overtime! Overtime. Alright, it's a beautiful spring evening here in Virginia. I'm excited to be out here in the garage working. It's actually so nice that the, uh, the bugs are out and uh, I had to get a citronella candle here burning because uh, that light was covered in little gnats or whatever. Um, so yeah, beautiful night to be out here in the garage. And if you saw my last video, uh, I'm, things are starting to get a little tight here in the garage with all of these projects and don't worry, I will eventually get to all of them, uh, including the, the joust, which I really, really want to work on. But to make a little bit more room, the next cabinet that's closest uh, to being able to go down to the basement is Armor Attack, which you saw me pick up recently, a working Cinematronics black and white vector game. And there's only a couple of things that I need to do to really get this to the point where I can take it downstairs. Um, so I'm gonna knock those out in this video. First thing is you can obviously see is this corner is blown out. Uh, but I actually have the, the piece that was broken off right here, so I'm going to do my best to reattach it. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. You'll be able to see the scar, but that uh, battle damage kind of matches the rest of the patina on the cabinet and uh, sort of matches the, uh, the war-torn battlefield theme of the game. Uh, a couple more things that I want to do. Obviously, uh, there's a, a, the um, lock is missing on the coin door, so I've got a lock for that. Uh, the coin door itself doesn't have any coin mechs, so I've got a couple that I'm going to throw into here. These buttons are kind of a mess. Um, they look all chewed up, almost like somebody, like an animal maybe chewed on them, or maybe somebody was trying to pry them up. They're all kind of cut up, and rather than spending forever uh, to polish them, and even then there's like chunks kind of taken out, especially the player one start button, or the one player start button. Uh, I went ahead and order, ordered a replacement set. I got these from ArcadeAdventures.com. They're sold as a set for uh, Armor Attack, which is perfect. And uh, I need to do a bit of cleaning uh, on the outside, as well as you can sort of see here, uh, the bezel's all dirty and there's dust in there. So we'll be careful to clean all that and not mess up any of the artwork. But uh, yeah, this should be relatively straightforward. Uh, I'm not gonna really worry about uh, some of the, the side arts, again, messed up. But uh, it's, it's 90 plus percent there. 
so uh, no need to replace uh, anything. But uh, yeah, and again, the, uh, the theme of the battle damaged city with the war raging in this game, that all kind of fits. So to repair this corner, which is the first thing I'm gonna do, I was thinking about a couple different ways to, to do it. Uh, I got some, uh, an angle bracket that I thought I could maybe you know, mount on the inside and have screws come through and grab on. But as you can see, there's really only a tiny bit of uh, space for that because you know, the cabinet sort of uh, box, you know, the exterior of the cabinet is sort of here and there's a, a bottom piece. So it's really only like this tiny triangle where there's any space for a bracket to have some screws come through. And that part is so thin um, that it's, it's, there's not enough material to grab onto. So I'm just gonna have to glue it. Uh, I'll get some wood glue and sort of get it right in here, just the parts that are exposed. Um, you know, so just, just the, uh, just this bit here, the sort of raw wood, not where the laminate is. And uh, that should hopefully do the trick. I mean, it's not, um, it's not uh, uh, weight bearing, right? It's just really sort of ornamental, that corner. So, um, actually, um, hmm, I don't really know what the uh, leg leveler situation is. So let me actually take a look at that real quick. All right, we're in good shape. Turns out uh, Armor Attack doesn't actually have leg levelers. It just has these four kind of blocks as skids. They're like uh, six and three quarters inches long by two inches across, just sort of like rectangular blocks. Um, so you can't really adjust the, the level or uh, anything to deal with an uneven floor. So I went ahead and ordered uh, some sort of elongated uh, carpet furniture slides. I usually just use the the circular ones to work with leg levelers, but this one doesn't have it. So uh, I went ahead and glued this corner back together uh, just with some you know, healthy amount of wood glue. I know where uh, some of it has dripped down onto the uh, concrete floor in the garage, but that's no big deal. I got uh, several of these uh, Irwin uh, quick grip clamps and the larger uh, Harbor Freight uh, generic one just to uh, hold everything in place. And uh, I think we're good. You know, you're gonna see this scar, but uh, that's no big deal. And I've got a piece of wood here with the part that would potentially make contact with the wood glue wrapped in wax paper, just to help kind of, you know, hold everything together. And we'll let that go and uh, we'll let that dry. And, uh, you know, the, the wood glue on its own should, knock on wood, no pun intended, uh, be enough to hold uh, everything together. So the next thing I want to do uh, while we're waiting for that to dry is uh, point, uh, put a lock on this coin door. And uh, I actually keep bags full of, uh, <laughs> you can see this mess, old uh, lock parts, uh, every possible piece you could think of. And I did piece together a working one here that will fit. Uh, so that's good. Uh, and I've got a couple of others. Um, I, w I also need to put a, lock on the back door, uh, but unfortunately I need a thicker one here, or a longer uh, lock, and I don't have a working lock on hand that'll make it all the way through the, the back door and, and come out the other side. So I'll have to uh, order one uh, for that. But yeah, I pieced together, pieced together a lock, and uh, we'll put this on the cabinet together. We'll put this on the coin door together. Let me just get the camera set up. And you know, this kind of stuff is, is really easy. You know, not everything uh, in this hobby is like, you know, repairing a vector monitor or uh, rebuilding, you know, a power supply or, um, you know, working on a PCB. Some of this is just, you know, relatively simple cosmetic work uh, and these little, these little touches here. So just coming in and, and taking a look at what's going on with this uh, lock. Uh, it's a pretty simple uh, mechanism. Uh, I need to just remove this uh, screw that kind of holds everything together in order to get the lock through. So we'll put that down here. And there's, I don't know if this is a, like, a, it's like a pal nut, kind of holds the whole thing on. And uh, yeah, I think, come in like this. I sort of dry uh, fitted it 
earlier just to make sure I would have everything lined up. So this, this uh, it's kind of like a pal nut, just sort of holds the lock uh, in place here. There we go. Yeah, that's good. And there is this sort of lock stopping washer that when everything is held together by the screw will prevent the, the key from just turning freely. It only goes, you know, uh, locked and uh, unlocked. Let me actually grab my channel locks just to snug up this uh, washer uh, a tiny bit or this uh, nut. I keep wanting to call it a pal nut. I don't know if that's technically what it is, but it kind of what reminds me. It's what it reminds me of. So yeah, that's nice and snug. And then we'll just come back here with this, uh, the latch, uh, I guess you would call it, and this screw that, that holds it in place. And uh, this would be the unlocked position. This would be the locked position. The key will only come out when it's in the locked position. So we'll line this up like so. Again, really, really, really simple stuff. And uh, not everything in this hobby is super complicated. All right, that's good. And so that latch you know, goes open and shut. Key comes out when it's locked. It can't come out when it's unlocked. And let's just take a look at what that looks like when it closes. Closes easy. Turns, kind of snug to turn, but that's okay. Snug to turn, comes out. Door doesn't want to jiggle at all. Key goes in, turn, open. So it's a little snug. You can always bend this thing a little bit. Maybe we can do it a little bit more. And you'll often thing, find these things sort of bent to all get out. And I don't really want to do it too much just to you know, make it a little bit easier. There we go, to open and close, but then that makes it a bit wiggly. So maybe we'll just unbend it a tiny bit. Yeah, trying to find that exact right amount of bend. All right, I think that's good. So that's our, uh, our lock. And now I don't want to lose this key. So I'll actually just keep it uh, in, the, uh, in the lock for now. Okay, so I'm sitting here looking at this thing and I, I noticed there are these two kind of brackets uh, down here, these guides that almost look like a, a vault and uh, they're supposed to be ex uh, you know, bars that extend uh, through this. I'm not entirely sure what this sort of thing is right here. I don't know if it's supposed to be for a, a slam switch or, or something, but uh, you know, I'm, I've got all these lock parts and I actually have this thing, which I think is supposed to kind of uh, be in here and uh, go up and down, right? So um, let me think, uh, I think it's supposed to go like this. So. Why don't I try uh, putting this thing in? So, uh, like I said, this is my first Cinematronics cabinet. So, I'm, uh, I'm learning how this thing is supposed to work. So let me take this off, the screw. And let's put this thing on. And I don't know if I'm putting it on the right way. <laughs> so I actually just snapped one of the rivets uh, holding this thing together, which I'm not thrilled about. Uh, let's see, I do have more, but I don't want to break them. Let me see. Um, maybe the, I mean, it looked a little bent, the one I was using, and I, I have a little bag of them. Uh, they all kind of look the, they all kind of look the same. Um, did I not have it on right? Is somebody out there, a Cinematronics expert, you know, screaming at me, screaming at the camera, Charlie, what are you doing? You put it on wrong. Like, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. It should be obvious by now. Holy smokes. 
That did it. What's weird though is that, you know, it wants to stay unlocked, right, when it's open, which I don't know if that's the smartest sort of security thing. You can almost like, I don't know, get it to spin on its own by gravity, right? Like gravity wants to make it unlock, which seems like a uh, somewhat flawed design, but this I think takes advantage of this mechanism. So uh, that's what we're gonna roll with. So we got like a vault door there. Isn't that wild? And uh, yeah, so vintage key, vintage lock, with a sort of vault uh, mechanism. So there we go. Uh, so we can put this latch or whatever it is away. And I've got a couple of uh, coin mechs to put in here. Uh, they're a bit dirty. I kind of wiped them down a little bit. You can clean these with soap and water, but I didn't want to go crazy just yet. But I'm noticing that um, there's kind of two styles. I think most coin mechs are pretty much uh, the same. I, th I know there's different manufacturers and whatever, but they kind of follow the same sort of uh, principles and, and shape and stuff because they need to be universal to fit in into most games. But uh, there's really kind of two ways to mount them with and without the sort of uh, post. And these are set up to use the posts and, and these two coin mechs don't have them. So I'm going to take a quick look downstairs and see if I can cannibalize any posts uh, from games that don't actually need them. Okay, I actually stole the entire coin mechs uh, from Centipede because it's going to be in that the kids uh, game uh, playroom. And uh, I'm going to keep the games in there like Centipede and NBA Jam for now on... Uh, on free play, so I won't need coin mechs in it for now. So yeah, this is the uh, the the coin mech without those sort of tabs, and here is one that has them. These aren't actually removable versus this one has the uh, screws to take them on and off. And I'm I'm reminded of uh, I think it was John from John's Arcade called these things uh, nipples, which I can understand how you might think of them as that, and. Uh, Somebody made, I don't know if it was Adam from One Circuit, maybe he made a video of John just saying nipples over and over again. Let me wriggle this thing in. There we go. And then this part sort of comes down to sort of lock it in place. That looks okay. Oh, just looking at the coin counter here, we are at 20,022. So divide that by four, and that's how many dollars uh, this cabinet had seen before it got to me. go. There we go. And uh, that looks okay. I've got a couple quarters in my pocket here just to run them through and make sure they fall through cleanly. Um, let's test the coin return mechanisms going well. These little things right here, if you can see them, they're a part of the coin door, not the coin mech. And I believe the nickname for them is pork chops. I've had to buy these before. Um, sometimes they're, they can be hard to find. Uh, and also this, uh, this coin door doesn't have the lockout coils uh, installed. And so the lockout coils are, um, you know, basically they're a magnet that, that uh, doesn't allow the coins to pass through the coin mech unless the power is on. That's to prevent kids from coming up, dropping in a quarter when the game is off, it going straight through the coin mech into the bucket and uh, not giving them any uh, anything for that. So I think a lot of municipalities required uh, coin-operated uh, machines uh, to have these lockout mechanisms so you couldn't just throw, you know, make a, make a donation when the game was uh, turned off. But this has a spot for the, uh, the lockout coils, but they're not here, and I don't see any wiring for them, so I don't know if Cinematronics just never had it. So let's drop a coin in and see what happens. All right, I think that passed through correctly. And hit the
That one didn't. Usually it has to be pretty level. There we go. Uh, so those are passing through and hitting the, the credit switch. Yep. So these coin mechs are working fine. And uh, this thing didn't have a coin bucket when I got it. Um, and I've tried a couple different ones, like uh, an Atari style one and like a, a, a Williams uh, pinball one. So I'm just gonna use this bin that I got at some point. I don't know if this is for, <laughs> this is meant to be and it's filthy. I don't know if this is meant to be a, a coin box or what, and it doesn't quite fit. Um, I'm put it in here. But what's nice is, uh, like I said, it doesn't quite fit, but it also doesn't interfere with the door closing, which a lot of the other ones did. So let me see if I can uh, put this in here and uh, lock the door and see if the coins will go into the correct spot. Sounded right. Let's see. Yep. All four quarters are in our little uh, bucket here, so, oh, it's filthy. Uh, so yeah, we'll use this as the coin box for now. It doesn't, there's like a little platform that it's supposed to sit in, and yeah, this is definitely not correct, but it's better than just letting the coins roll around all over the inside of the cabinet. So, why don't we turn our attention to the control panel and bezel and get those uh, cleaned up. Okay, so unlike most arcade machines, the control panel doesn't just have a, a latch underneath or inside the coin door underneath the, uh, the control panel holding it in place. There's like a metal bracket here uh, with, uh, I think these are Robertson screws. It's sort of the, the square uh, bit head, if that'll focus, not really. And so we've got a bracket here with uh, three of those screws. We've got a bracket here with six that also holds the, uh, the bezel in place. So I think I can just come in here and unscrew these to get this uh, control panel off. All right, and that's all nine screws. And uh, the ones for the top part just under the bezel are uh, maybe twice as long as the other screws. So I'll have to remember that. And now I think we should just be able to take these brackets off and hopefully the bezel doesn't slide. Interesting. Interesting. Nothing wants to move. Is it just stuck on? I see a couple of wing nuts uh, inside the above the, the control panel. Um, and uh, I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Let me try unscrewing those and see if that busts our control panel free. Yeah, there is a, a bolt on the outside. All right, so one uh, wing nut removed. There's a large washer and two, uh, two lock washers in there with it. I dropped one of them, but then got it back. Well, I guess they're like star washers. And then a washer, large washer. And then a bolt, carriage bolt to the outside. Okay. Are we free now? Yes, we're free now. Kind of. Ooh, okay. Oh, there is a part of the wiring from the control panel, or from the coin door. And then we have a ribbon cable. Is this an easy disconnect? Of course not. Uh, let me disconnect it from the PCB. 
you know, this is a relatively early game. And so, you know, some of the uh, operator friendly, owner friendly conveniences uh, just hadn't been developed yet or hadn't been adopted by Cinematronic. All right, so that's the red control panel ribbon cable disconnected. So this should just come right out now. All right. Uh, and so that those uh, brackets didn't actually um, hold our uh, control panel onto the cabinet. They're really just there to uh, hold um, this plexi uh, onto the onto the wood. Uh, I'll try cleaning it up from above. I, we might have to uh, get underneath and, and clean it up a bit, but yeah, really simple. And then here's all the look at all those all those leaf switch buttons. And we'll be replacing, not the holders, but the button, the button assembly top. So look at all that. We've got some uh, markings from the factory. And uh, there's a little circuit board here. I don't know if this is, it's, I, I wouldn't call it an encoder. It's just sort of, I guess, mapping from this ribbon or from the, the wires from the, uh, the buttons themselves to a ribbon cable. I don't know what this, I guess it's, it's not a ground. There's some other sort of three wire Molex connector that goes to the, uh, it looks like it goes to the, the coin door lights. No, that can't be right. I have no idea. All right, so we'll put this, this off to the side and then we'll take a look at how the bezel comes out. So that just lifts. Slides down. All right, and this is a, a plexi bezel, and it's got the artwork printed on the inside. So we'll have to be very careful when we're cleaning this side that we don't mess anything up. Uh, but it's nice and filthy, as you can see. And then putting this over here, and then taking a look at what's going on. Inside, we have a plastic bezel, which feels stapled up there and stapled right here. So maybe we'll leave that alone for now. And then there's this uh, overlay. Let me see if I can come in and show you close. There's this colored plastic transparent overlay uh, right onto the tube. I can even feel it. Oh, it's quite thick much thicker than I thought it would be. Um, so we'll be kind of careful to clean this and, and not uh, mess with any of the, the artwork. So we'll probably just wipe that down a little bit. But yeah, for the most part, looking, uh, looking pretty good. Um, yeah, while I've got things apart, I might just uh, clean this uh, real quick. So yeah, let me, uh, I'm actually going to Google how to clean a, uh, an overlay just so I don't use a chemical that's going to mess with it. So let me do that and come right back. Okay, so I really couldn't find much about how to clean a color overlay, which is surprising, you know, because monitors attract dirt and dust and, you know, lots of early games had these uh, overlays like, uh, oh, what was it? Space Invaders for sure. And, you know, lots of vectors like Star Castle and, and others. Um, so the only thing I saw that made any kind of sense was to use Novus, which you've seen me use before. Uh, this is good for cleaning plastic. It's not a polish like Novus 2 and Novus 3. It's just for, for cleaning, and it won't fog up uh, plastics and ple plexis. So I'm kind of nervous about this. I'm just going to wet. Uh, I'm going to do a little test in the corner. I'm going to wet paper towel. And uh, try it a little bit in the corner here. And uh, I'm seeing nicotine come off, but I don't think I'm seeing any of the color from the overlay coming off. So I think I'm kind of safe. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're in good shape. So let me just spray some on here. And then we'll Clean it up. Yeah, look at all that. Just 
I'm assuming it's nicotine, right? From people smoking in bars, arcades, whatever. You know, the youngsters these days don't realize just how ubiquitous smoking was 30, 40 years ago. Uh, let's do some more. Well, it's funny, I can, I can feel it. It doesn't quite make contact with the center of the, of the monitor tube. You know, it's almost like the curve of the, the overlay is uh, different than the curve of the, the monitor. So like the middle piece, like I can push it in. Don't want to do it too much because just in case it's brittle, but it feels, feels pretty resilient. Famous last words. So that's working okay. Hopefully none of you are cringing watching me do this. So maybe there's some wisdom out there that I haven't been privy to where I'm destroying this. So hopefully that's not the case. And I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm not going to remove it and clean it and put it back on. This is just a, a cursory, cursory cleaning. Let me get some more paper towel. I wonder if the, maybe the color is actually uh, printed on the inside and I don't need to be so delicate, but because I don't feel on the outside like a, a difference where the lines are. But uh, I don't want to risk it. Okay, not perfect, but uh, looking pretty good actually. And um, let me take a look at the plexi or the bezel. All right, so we do have some uh, dirt that I want to clean off on the inside, but I'm going to be very careful not to clean into where the paint is on the back side, because like I said, this is reverse printed. I can even feel where the, uh, I don't know if it's silk or whatever uh, painting is. And there's a bit of scratching here, but it's, it's, it's not bad. Uh, so I'm going to use the Novus one again to get this cleaned up and then I'll uh, come back and we'll clean it on the, from the front side when it's on the, uh, the cabinet. All right, so I actually used a little bit of uh, simple green on the inside again, just in the, the viewable area, and then uh, wipe that down with Novus one. So I think we're good on the inside. And again, I really stayed away from the, uh, the painted part, the artwork part. Get that lined up here. Okay. I think I'm actually gonna put the, that upper bracket back in because I believe, I believe the, uh, the bezel will slide in or the, uh, the control panel will slide in. So I'll do this to, and I can do it. I don't have to go in all the way, just hand tight. All right. Just to hold the bezel from, from sliding. And these screws actually go through the bezel right? And, and into the wood below, which I think is kind of interesting. So all right, just gonna spray this down quickly with simple green. Give it a good wipe. All the gunk out. And again, I'm not worried too much on this side just because this is not the side where the artwork is. So all right. And again, we're not going for Museum perfect or anything like that. There's some sort of residue here, a sticker or something, or gum. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could maybe get at that with goof off or something, but that's too much risk of messing up something else. And again, when you saw these things back in the day in an actual arcade on location, did they look like museum pieces? Of course not. These things were commercial machines that had 
kids and teenagers and even sometimes adults beating on them all day long. So uh, that's one of the reasons I don't go for just pristine restorations. I would much rather have something looking really original with some battle scars than uh, have it look perfectly minty while being, you know, not the original stuff. And some people might disagree, and that's totally okay to each their own. This is just the way I like to do it. All right, now I'm going to come back with my Novus One plastic cleaner and come back over the top and just make sure we get any potential um, residue left by the simple green. Get that out of here. All right, that's looking better than it was before. Again, if I really wanted to, I could sand or uh, strip the paint off of the, the brackets and repaint them. And you, know, you can really kind of go nuts trying to make this stuff just absolutely perfect. And I don't have the time or patience for that. So I'm going to call the bezel done for now. And... Um, I'd love to knock out this control panel. Looking at this here, I want to replace, like I said, all these buttons. And right now the buttons are what's holding the, uh, the plexi on. And it looks like the plexi on top is pretty, or underneath the, the, the plexi is pretty clean. So I don't feel the need to really take the plexi off. So I think I'm going to replace the screws that hold the plexi onto the control panel. And then I'll take all of these uh, buttons off. And it's just a, uh, on this one, no, it's okay. Uh, and it's really just a power nut on each of these that holds them on. Here, I can actually do one with you. Just come in here. Ooh, these are nice and snug. Usually they're just hand tight. You grab some channel locks. And if I'm lucky, and I probably won't be, um, and do this right here in front of the camera. All right, that should be hand turnable now, and it is. And the only problem is the whole leaf switch wants to, uh, leaf switch holder wants to come off. Again, we can just pull this off like so. And uh, this button comes right out. But yeah, that wants to come off. So why don't I actually, uh, <laughs> rather than taking all of these off and then trying to remember where everything goes, uh, I think I'm gonna clean the control panel overlay first and then replace the buttons. That might not be the best way to do it, but that's certainly the easiest way to do it. And so that's what I'm gonna do right now so yeah so what I'm gonna do is um, yeah just look at how look at how chewed up especially that player one start button is so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna clean I'm just gonna wipe down with uh, simple green and then Novus the uh, Novus one the um, uh, the the control panel plexi uh, then I'm gonna remove all the buttons one by one replace them with the new ones and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like one thing that's kind of interesting is see on the side here, they used this piece of scrap that has laminate on it for the left side, and this piece has no laminate on it. So I guess uh, it's just uh, Cinematronics being thrifty using scrap pieces. I can respect that. So yeah, let me go knock that out and come right back. All right, two quick things I just wanted to show you while I'm putting these new buttons in. And so far I've only replaced the, uh, the player one or the one player start button. The re replacement buttons are just a little bit longer than the originals, so you can see how this one comes out, you know, uh, maybe a couple millimeters longer than the uh, the original one sticks out. So I had to rebend uh, the leaf switch just a little bit to make sure that it wasn't accidentally making contact when uh, before the user um, hits the button. But now that looks pretty good. So yeah, the, the new ones are just a tad longer than the old ones. And just to, to kind of compare them here, one big difference is, you know, other than the, the length being just a, a tad, whoa. 
other than the, the length of the bottom part just being a tad longer, the originals will, were held together with these E-clips and uh, could be taken apart. There's a spring inside, you could clean them out. Uh, the, uh, the new ones are kind of all in one and I don't think there's an easy way really to, uh, to take them apart, although I'm sure you can. But yeah, just take a look at how chewed up, chewed up this uh, start button is. So, you know, usually I like to keep the original stuff, but uh, that's a bit too far gone. It's, it's had too much abuse, so I don't mind using the replacements in this case because they're 90% uh, you know, identical. And you can already see how much nicer that new uh, one-player start button uh, looks compared to the others, just how yellowed and, and beat up they are. And uh, the, the Plexi cleaned up pretty good. We've actually got quite a bit of... Um, burn marks from cigarettes, you know, people sort of holding cigarettes while while playing and melting the plexi a little bit, but not too bad. There's no real holes anywhere. Maybe this is sort of the, the worst spot where uh, the word right uh, for the player two, and this is weird, right? Player two is on the left, player one's on the right, unlike most games. So right here, it's sort of, you know, uh, a bit gouged, a bit scratchy from that, uh, from those cigarette burns, but you know, all in all, not bad. So we're going to live with it like that. So, yep, I'm gonna continue replacing the rest of these uh, two, four, six, eight, ten buttons, one down, nine to go, and I'll show you what it looks like when I get it all back together. Okay, how does that look with those brand new buttons? I think they came out really, really nice. And yeah, I've got the game on. I uh, just wanted to make sure that it's still working because uh, Either today or tomorrow, or tomorrow or the next day, well, all in this one video, I'm going to be moving this down to the basement, which is, again, violating a cardinal rule of owning vector arcade machines, which is, if you've got a working vector, don't mess with it, don't move it, don't touch it, don't do anything, because uh, you're risking it no longer working again. So I'm going to tempt fate, and once we get this finally uh, cleaned up, we'll bring it down into the basement. Um, I did save the original buttons right here, so I'm not throwing these away. Uh, we'll just add these to the hoarder pile in case uh, I or anyone ever needs them again in the future. But yeah, these uh, these brand new buttons look real, real nice. And they're just a tiny bit yellow. They're, they're a little bit off-white. They're not perfect, brilliant white, which is great because it kind of fits uh, with the, uh, the design of the cabinet. Um, so got the control panel mounted back in. You know, there's a little bit of... Uh, um, laminate kind of missing here. And it looks like originally somebody tried to fill it in with some pen or Sharpie. I think I might just do the same and sort of color this in with Sharpie. Because other than that, the cabinet looks real good. So, yeah, and I even uh, wiped down the marquee just a little bit. You know, there's a little bit of tape residue here. And I don't want to go too crazy and really scratch it up because this is just this is just plexi. So, uh, yeah, and it's already beat up battle damage a little bit, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, some people were saying in the comments when they saw this, the pickup video, that they thought the same. It almost looks like it was meant to be uh, like that, which is great. So, at this point, I'm going to call it a night. Um, I'm going to let this dry until tomorrow. Uh, then I'll pull all the clamps off and everything. We'll take a look at what that scar looks like. I don't know if I can color that in with, with something. Uh, you know, the cabinet itself is a bit grimy, so we will wipe that down. I eventually need to figure out what I'm going to do with the uh, back door lock. I need to order one. And uh, yeah, we'll get this cleaned up and uh, move down into the basement. So stay tuned for that. Okay, now that everything's dry, we can go ahead and take these clamps off. Uh, it's actually really, really warm here today in Virginia. Uh, it's in the 80s, so I've got the air conditioning on in the house, but it's not uh, unbearably hot in the garage yet. So here's the, here we go. That didn't stick at all. Yeah, that piece of wood blocking, sort of putting some, some outward pressure or pressure from the outside in didn't stick at all. So that's looking good. And let's take the long bar clamp off. Okay, that didn't stick. Good. There we go. I don't want to wiggle this too much, but yeah, that looks pretty good. It's not flexing at all, so I think we got a good solid adhesion. Um, yeah, definitely a scar, but uh, let's take a closer look. Not so bad. Obviously very visible. Um, 
I don't know, maybe I can fill that in with something at some point, but not awful. So yeah, I'm happy with how that turned out. And uh, yeah, I think the last thing to do is really just clean up uh, the side of the cabinet. And what I, you know, you can see how, you know, dingy uh, it is. And I actually already cleaned the other side. Oh, it's way too close. Um, and you can see how much, you know, more brilliant white this is. And really all I did was, you know, a little bit of uh, simple green and paper towel on the side art itself, and then simple green and uh, a magic eraser uh, on the laminate. You know, I didn't want to take the magic eraser to the, the, the side art sticker, the side art decal. There's really no reason to do that. But to scrub, gently scrub uh, the laminate, that magic eraser worked perfectly. You know, there's a couple of uh, marks uh, left where I didn't want to go crazy. But uh, so, yeah, I'm going to do the same process on the other side, and hopefully we'll get it just as nice and clean. Uh, I got to clean up the, the front plate and inside the, the hood uh, of, the, uh, of the cabinet. But uh, yeah, and one more thing I just wanted to point out is um, there's a number stamped into the T-molding right here, if you can see it right here. And I think it's one, two, three, nine, nine. And I'm not sure what that is because it's not the serial number. Because if we come in the back here, we do have this handwritten serial number from Cinematronics of 804406, uh, which is obviously not the same as 12399. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. I don't know if this was added by a operator as like an asset number, something like that. But uh, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to get this uh, cabinet cleaned up uh, and then we'll be ready to bring this down to the basement. And I kind of want to work quickly because it sounds like we might be getting uh, a thunderstorm later today. So let me clean this up and we'll come back and bring it downstairs. Well, that cleaned up rather nicely, if I do say so myself. Uh, I even cleaned the, the bin or tub that I'm going to use as the, uh, the coin box for now in the cabinet. And I paid special attention not to really mess with uh, the seam here or the scar. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to get a little bit of... Do they make white Sharpies? Maybe to fill in that hole a little bit. But yeah, what a difference a little cleaning makes with... Um, you know, some magic erasers and simple green, you know, it's not perfect, but certainly a million times better than it was before. So yeah, let me get this uh, down to the basement before the storm rolls in. Wind's already picking up and uh, I don't want to be dealing with rain, nor do I want to have this go another day. Uh, I am just going to use the big wheel uh, hand truck uh, for now, just because the, um, the, the appliance dolly, uh, it's kind of harder, rougher going down stairs it's a lifesaver coming up with sort of the the stair climber things that it has in the back if you can see that but these big round wheels sort of make it a little easier and gentler to go downstairs so i'm going to take advantage of that so i don't jostle this game too much because i'm about to commit that cardinal sin which is don't move a working <laughs> vector game so uh yeah i'm even going to take the back door off just to take some weight off and because it's not you know fully secure without that lock. So um, yeah, cross your fingers, wish me luck. Hopefully this thing makes, survives the journey. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, Armor Attack is back in the building. I've added it to the open slot in the lineup, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. I don't know if you saw in the video when I was coming downstairs, I did actually attach the back door. Um, I just didn't like how with the, the hand truck with no back doors, putting way too much pressure on the lower panel of the cabinet. So putting the back door on, yeah, added a little bit more weight, but it was still very, very manageable despite it being a you know really heavy uh, particle board cabinet. So. Now is the moment of truth. It looks good lined up here, but uh, it's not gonna mean anything if it doesn't work. So uh, we're about to find out whether I'm paying the ultimate price with this game. So let me turn off the house lights and find my way to the 
power switch. Here we go, three, two, one. That's actually a good sound. The game does that when it powers on. Uh, we've got the marquee light on, we've got the coin door lights on, and let's see if the monitor warms up. And yes, we have an image on the cinematronic, cinematronic, <laughs> cinematronics vector beam vector monitor. Everything seems to be working fine. So yeah, this time I, I dodged a bullet. Uh, I definitely wouldn't recommend ever moving a working arcade machine, especially one that hasn't been bulletproofed. Um, so, uh, yeah, what do we think? Uh, it's interesting, you know, with the, um, with the overlay, it's kind of hard to see a little bit with the, uh, the house lights, uh, down like this. If we turn them back on, how does that look? Obviously we can see what's going on and we can see, so we can still see the, the image on the screen, but it's interesting that, uh, yeah, you know, in the sort of, uh, the, the dimly lit arcade environment that you would expect, it's really hard to see. Let me see what happens when I, all right, I just changed the, uh, the setting. I have these smart lights uh, down here and uh, maybe that's a little bit better. It's still, it's still kind of hard to, to see. It's easier to actually see on the camera than it is uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the screen. So why don't we play a game of armor attack. I can't remember, if, maybe I did this in the pickup video. I don't know. And I, I, I've been playing a little bit, but I haven't quite really been practicing or getting better. So uh, I've got the, uh, the little bin that I'm using as a coin box. Uh, um, so let's coin up. Here we go, one credit. And we will press start for a one player game. So again, in this game, you play as this little puny Jeep in a war-torn city fighting against tanks and helicopters and uh, trying not to get blowed up. All right, we got a tank. We got a helicopter. Now the helicopter advances a bonus. It advances, I think, the score that we get for each, uh, for each tank. And you gotta be careful because you can only fire two bullets on screen at once. But I guess the helicopter can blow up the tank. Oh, I got hit. I guess the helicopter shots will hit the tank. Um, so that's kind of, uh, that's kind of interesting. Oh, and then the helicopter got me. Yeah, still getting the hang of these controls. Uh, it plays pretty smooth, right? The good sort of momentum here and good turn radius. Um, and I found a trick to sort of like roll up behind the tanks. And you gotta keep moving with the helicopter. Oh, they got me. So yeah, I don't really have any strategy yet. And there's the, uh, the Morse code again that says uh, don't register. Uh, as in, don't register for the selective service, otherwise known as the draft. I got hit again. I think, uh, yeah, I've got one more Jeep left. Yeah, so fun game, kind of unique, definitely different compared to uh, what I've what I had before my collection. And my kids actually have been enjoying this. They like the theme, right? Especially the boys. And there we go. Terrible, 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 terrible. What did I get? Five hundred and sixty points. Well, uh, again, this is, this is not the Overtime Arcade tutorial how to play tips and tricks channel. It's uh, more about fixing these games and uh, bringing them back to life. But uh, yeah, so now we've got our war-torn armor attack added to the lineup back in the basement. And uh, I, think, uh, I think that'll about do it for this episode. So there you have it. 
I successfully moved a working Vector arcade machine from the garage, down the basement stairs, added it to the lineup here in the basement, and, uh, uh, <laughs> and it's still working. So, uh, small miracle, celebrate the small things in life. And uh, yeah, so two working Vector games here in the lineup next to some other classics. So uh, something a, a little bit more unique, a little bit more special. And uh, I think I'm gonna get quite a lot of enjoyment from this Cinematronics classic. So yeah, I think uh, I'll wrap it up here. Uh, thanks as always for all the likes, comments, shares, subscribes, everything. Every little thing you guys do helps with the algorithm, helps spread the word. We are, it's, it's, it's shocking. We are rapidly approaching a thousand subscribers. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already and you've watched this video to the end, you know, now would be a great time to subscribe. I'm gonna have some really cool stuff going on to celebrate a thousand subscribers when we hit that milestone. Uh, but it's really all about making these videos for you all to enjoy. I'm having a ton of fun making them. I'm getting great feedback, great reception. I, I really, I really love the fact that you guys enjoy these videos because that's what makes it fun to make. So anyway, enough with the rambling. Thanks for watching Overtime Arcade. I'm Charlie. And I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 overtime!